So why not? He's solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul, an impregnable castle. I'm set for life. My help and glory are in God. Granted strength and safe harbor, God. So trust him absolutely, people. Lay your lives on the line for him. God is a safe place to be. God is a safe place to be. Amen? The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, we'll stop right there. Where the spirit of the Lord, he ain't everywhere. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's emancipation from body, freedom, and deliverance from sin. So what am I saying? Where the spirit of the Lord is, that's where you want to create expectation. That's where you want an atmosphere that's conducive to the move of God. Because he ain't everywhere. Amen. But when you learn what it is to create an atmosphere for God. When you learn what God, see what this here. It's in Psalm 22, the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. And see, that's what happened a minute ago. You created an atmosphere. You called on it, and his presence showed up. But how do you know whenever his presence show up, he shows up? I mean, you know, when he show up, all that is him shows up with him. So why do we want to create an atmosphere for the presence of God? It's because everything you need is coming out of the presence of God. Amen. Did we not see that right here? He's a solid rock under my feet, breathing room for my soul. He's an impregnable castle. Everything you need is in him. Amen? Look what he goes on to say in verse 5. My soul wait thou only on God. Why? If you're expecting anything from anywhere else, Oh, well. You see that? What does the verse say? My expectation is from him. So you got to ask yourself, what is it you need? Right. Now watch this. In discovering what I need, I've got to also discover the source of my need. Right. Yeah. When I know what I need and I know the source of what I need, then guess what? My need is now met. Huh? Did he not say, I will supply all your need according to my Let's see how many this with you guys. Now watch this. Let's break that down. I will supply who need? God ain't got a need. I will supply. I will supply. What's that next word? So you may have more than one. You may have a varying type of need. There may be many things you need. But God says, I will. Oh, your need. Let's hmm? see, because he sometimes let's, let's work with this for a minute. Because see, sometimes we want to make it seem like we have no need. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, can I hit you real, real hard and keep it rolling? Yeah. If you have no need, you have no need of supply. Right. And if you have no need of supply, then could it be you have no need of God? See, you see, we got to kill pride right here. Because pride won't let you admit you need 
need help. Pride won't let you admit there's something missing. I'm not where I need to be. I know there is more for me. I know there's a stagnation. I have a need. God says, well, I will supply all you need. How? According to my riches in glory. Well, what is glory? It's the presence of God. Some things you need require more presence. Uh, can, can you handle this? The bigger the present, the bigger the presence. Hmm? 15 minutes may not get what you want. 20 minutes may not get what you want. You may have needed 21 days. And can I submit, you might need to go further. The bigger the need, the more of the presence you need. I'm going to supply your need, but it's according to my, watch this, but don't miss this, your need, my presence, my riches, my glory. God says, you ain't understand. I'm three dimensions ahead of what you need. But you need me. But are you going to create an atmosphere for me to move in? Are you going to create a place for me to move in? Are you going to create praise and worship so I can inhabit that? Huh? God says, I want to. Don't miss it. God says, I want to inhabit your situation. But watch this here. God is so awesome. Yeah. He said, but where is my invitation? Huh? See, some things we don't want to invite God into. But guess what? How you going to get out? If you don't invite him in. Huh? Sitting in four years ago, four years ago, guess who coming to them? Huh? Where is the invitation? When are you going to invite God in? When are you going to create an atmosphere? You know how you do when folks are coming home, especially folks of importance, you clean the house. You clean the kitchen. Some of you, you got to clean up so he can come. Huh? God said, God said, wait a minute, I ain't finna just sit down anywhere. You got to at least have a chair for him to sit in. You got to have the room right. You got to have the atmosphere. The, the aroma got to be right. Well, he said your praise, your worship, your prayer is an aroma. The Bible calls it a sweet-smelling savor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Don't do more for this one or that one. It ain't did it for God. Huh? Ain't did it for God. Make room for God. Clean up for God. Create a space and an atmosphere for God. Why? Because I'm expecting something from God. I know you good, you good, you good. But what I need right now is going to take God. Love you, appreciate you. But this is a God thing. Huh? I need God in this situation. I need God in this circumstance. I need God in this Iowa. So when we deal with the atmosphere of expectancy being, being what is it called the breeding ground for miracles, you, what you're saying is, God, I need a fresh start. I need a new season. I need a new day. I'm expecting this thing to change. Yes. Lamentation said it's the past morning by morning. Yes. You got to get up expecting yes. new mercies. Yes. 
Huh? God, I appreciate yesterday, but this is a whole new day. Not only am I in a new day, I'm in a whole new season. I ain't just in a new year, I'm in a new season, dealing with a new assignment. And what was ain't working today. Huh? See, we keep failing to understand that the Bible says the path of the righteous gets brighter day by day. Which means I got to give more today than I did yesterday. Hmm? I can't get slack on God. I got to increase where I am in God. Go to Romans 8. Let me read this one. You go to Romans 8. I'm going to read it from a different translation, but it's going to satisfy. Romans 8. 24 and 25. Look what it says. I'll read it from the ESV. English Standard Version. It says, for in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? 25. But if we hope for what we do not see, look what he said. You learn how to wait on it with patience. You learn how to wait on it with patience. When I understand my source and I know he's going to come through, I learn how to get patience while I wait. Huh? Don't let your impatience cause you to miss what God's getting ready to do in your life. So create the atmosphere, stay in the atmosphere, wait on God to move. Hope that is seen ain't hope. Break that down. Thank you, I should. That means you already got it. So the question becomes today, what is it you don't have yet? That's the topic of conversation. What is it you don't have yet? What is it that you're still anticipating from God? Expecting from God? Well, the Bible said, wait on it. The Bible said, be anxious for it. But in prayer and with Make your you gotta wait on it. Huh? Too many times we are rushing the process. Sometimes God's moving this, changing this, changing that, doing this, doing that. You gotta wait on it. But while you wait, don't lose your expectation. He's already declared. I'm going to meet your need. Yes, yes, yes. Did he not? Yes. Philippians 4, did he not? He's going to meet your need. Right. So wait on it. The Bible says you need patience yes. after you, watch this, after you've done the will of God. Yes. Yes. See, first you got to know it's the will of God. Right. Right. But then when you know it's the will of God and you ask God and God says yes according to the promise. Only thing left is to wait it out. It's the only thing left. I got to what? Wait it out. Watch this here. Let me let's say right there in Romans 8. Bag it up to uh, 22. Look what it says. I'll read it from the ESV. It says, For in this hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, but who hopes for what he sees? Uh, no, 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 that's wrong. Wait, 22. He says, all around us we observe a pregnant creation. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply what? Birth pain. But it's not only around us, it's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing within us, and we are also feeling birth pain. Huh? God said, this is birth pain. 
Well, the average one of us who know anything about having children, you're talking in at least nine months. But in the nine months, there's some perfect passion. Huh? There's some hurt. Don't miss this. There's some hurt you go through. But John talks about after the delivery. You don't even remember. Huh? You don't even remember for the joy of what you just received. What he goes on to say. We're also feeling the great pain. These stale and barren bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting does not diminish us. Did you hear that? Waiting on God will not diminish you. But waiting on God will replenish you. Woo, glory to God. Because when God gets through with you, you're going to have more than you had. That's why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. I like that. Huh? All the mother has to do is hold on. Hmm? Yes, the body's going through things, but what she don't realize is what you really waiting on is the clock. It's the nine months of God doing what he does. Are you with me this morning? And what am I saying to you? That when you learn how to get pregnant in God, you got to wait your nine months. Huh? You got to learn how to wait on God and let God develop and let God stretch and let God move and let God establish. But after, tell your neighbor, when he get through with me, ooh, Lord have mercy, when he get through working on me and working stuff out of me, ooh, Lord have mercy. Hmm? Watch this here. We are enlarged in the waiting. I love that. Because does not the baby get bigger? As the months progress? Y'all ain't catching me. That's where God said, I'm going to do it seemingly. I'm going to do abundantly. I'm going to do above what it is you asking for. It's going to be greater. The pain of God said it's bigger. Since we are enlarged in the way, we of course don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joyful is our expectancy. Huh? Did you see that? The more joy. It's our expectancy. Why? Because we know God didn't bring to this point to not deliver. God didn't bring you this far to not deliver. You got to value waiting. You got to value patience. You got to understand and know your God. Okay, let me show you this. Go to James. Go to the book of James. One. So what James 1 verse 2 says, we know this is, he says, my brother, do what? When you fall into knowing this, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to put it all together. For you. The reason I gotta stay in faith, the reason I need faith, and the reason I gotta stay in faith, cause faith through patience is working it out. 
Now, in the midst, temptation, which is distractions, are coming, but I'm yet holding on to what I asked for. Now, remember 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is the confidence we have if we ask anything according to his will, and that's because I've already secured the will. I know this is what God wants for me. I know this is what God has purposed for me, so guess what? Here come hell or high water. I ain't turning this loose. Because it's going to yield for me in the end. The key is, I just can't give up. I can't quit. Many times, too often, we quit at the point of breakthrough. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work is what? For, but let Huh? But let pray, faith and patience mature you. Huh? Let faith and patience mature you. Now watch this here. Catch this now. Read that last part. I want you to read. Amen. Wait a minute. Huh? Y'all can see, see y'all. Come on, now, let's, read, let's read that one more time, though, y'all. Y'all, see, what? Let me ask y'all something. We family don't no matter. You know I go off course for just a second. Why is it that when we get to the promise part, we lose our shadow? Huh? It's almost like your expectancy right there you can't believe it. So let's read that again and let's see can you help yourself. Because that was enough right there. Y'all all took off running down the road and I just cut the camera off and waited. Somebody all ran down the road. Okay, let's try that one more time. Verse 4. Now, hold on, let me help you right quick. That he who we talking to? Because I know sometimes we get mixed up in the crowd, but, but understand he's talking to you. Y'all need to catch that right there. Huh? That you should have did a twirl right there. Listen, he talking. That little word right there, ye, Y-E. He talking to you. Okay, let me give a little something else. Why we come to church always expecting the word to be for somebody else? Girl, if you had a pit in that day, that word was for you. No, 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 no. They weren't here. They weren't here. Why is it that you hear for others, but don't hear for yourself? Huh? Did you come this morning to hear for somebody else? I did. Huh? You got to come for yourself. That, okay, let's read it again. For. That ye may be perfect, entire, wanting nothing. That ye may be. God said, this is the end of expectation. I don't want you to wait for nothing. I want you to be poor. I want you to be full grown in this because I need you to be able to handle it. See, you ain't catching it anymore. Why do I have to mature? Because I got to be able to handle what God's about to put on me. I can't be childish with this next blessing. I got to be full grown. If God give it a call, you need to know how to drive it. Are you catching it? That's why perfection, maturity is first. God says, I got to mature you for this. Because if I put 
put you in this, if I give you this, if I promote you and you ain't ready, you meant you sitting there mad at other folk, but yet you ain't prepared. Why do we ask God for what we ain't prepared to him? Expectations get you maturity and everything you need, but first maturity. God, give me the wisdom to handle this. Huh? Don't don't let me get this and go crazy. Don't let me get this and leave. Because see, what happens so many times. And I can testify from what I know happens here. You come in with no job, pray for you, you get a job, and I ain't seen you since you got the job. If nothing else out of this house, you can get a job. I know that, but we got the faith to get you a job. But when you get the job, it amazes me. I ain't got to look for you, I ain't got to call you. Be up here in the block, dogs. I can't even get to the pulpit. Because you up here crying, oh, you trying to me. It's God move. And then I can walk my straight path right through here. Can't find it. Huh? See, see, watch this here. It's the old saying. The thing it takes to get it. Huh? Now watch this here. Watch this here. We got the giving faith, but we ain't got the keeping faith. Yeah. 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 Hmm? Oh, we got the faith to get it. Because them, them bill collectors calling and that paper coming through the mail, oh, it'll make you pray. But then after you can catch up a little bit, God, I holler at you. See, we gotta learn how to stop hollering at God. We learn how to sit in the presence of God. Oh, Lord have mercy. He says, so that you're entirely lacking in wanting for what? Nothing. Go to Galatians while we're here. Tell your neighbor, Bible truth, don't get mad. Don't get mad at the word. Oh, Galatians 6. Look what it said. I'll read it for the ESV again. Galatians 6, verse 10, 6. Galatians 6, verse 6. It says, let the one who is taught in the word share all good things with the one who teaches. And as a, come on back and tell me, oh, that thing work. Huh? Pastor, I love it when I get a call. Pastor, you ain't gonna believe it out of this on here. Huh? Because I know it works. Mm -hmm. That's just like when Jesus gave the disciples power, they went out and came back. God, you ain't gonna believe it. The devil's what's up. He said, that's what I gave you the power for. He said, but that ain't the big thing. Understand your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's why it works. You got a relationship with me. So, let the one who is taught in the word share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Watch this. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. Huh? Now watch this here. Watch this here. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. See that? Finish. But the one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap what? Ask yourself a question. Do I want to leave? Hmm? Do I want to live? Do I want to live it out? 
Do I want it the way God says I can have it? Why? Why is this important? It's going to determine what I sow. There's natural seed, but there's also spiritual seed. Huh? Is that in the book? Look what he goes on to say, verse 9. And let us not grow for in you got to know that it is. Now, I'm just covering everything I'm preaching from. A, listen, talking about seeing. You got to know when it's your seed. And then, watch this, predicated upon what you sow determines what's due when your season, your proper season comes around. But if you ain't sown nothing, he talks about flesh and then he talks spirit. If you ain't sold that naturally, right. ain't nothing coming. Right. And if you ain't been in God's presence, ain't nothing coming. It's too dimensional. Yeah. Now, watch this. Here's what most folks don't understand about 24. 20, 24. That's two twelves. Right. Twelve is order. Twelve is order. Right. Order is the natural. Order. order. Mm -hmm. God says we need to get order in the house. The physical house and the spiritual house. Ooh. Now, One clap, the oh, Lord Jesus. I know it can be a bit more when you think about this. But, but some of you, that already excites some of you. Huh? Now watch this here. Go back and read. I ain't got time to go. Joshua 24. What does he say? As for me and my house. Me and my house. Me and my house. 24. The house got to get before. 24. The service to the house got to get right. 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 I told you the other week, God gave us a word, even in prayer out here. God said, This is the year you're going to learn to master my presence. Because without my presence, it ain't going to work. Hmm? Look what he goes on to say. Let me finish up. And let us not grow weary in well doing. Because in due season, look at this. We will we will reap. We will reap. But don't pass out before the blessing manifests. Don't fall out. Don't fall short before. Don't get weary. Don't get me wrong. There, there's much in life that challenges all. But if you fall out before the miracle comes, don't do it. So then, watch this here. Watch this here. Ten. So then, as we have what? See, watch this here. This ain't just season to miss your opportunity. Opportunities are going to be yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Huh? You got to wake up every day with an expectation that this is my day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my time. Yeah, yeah. This is my season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And God is going to move. What am I doing every day? I'm preparing myself. Right. And guess what? And if it don't happen today, I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow. And if it don't happen this week, I'm going to do the same thing next week. Why? Because maturity says I'm always ready. Y'all miss that. Day. When the Bible talks about the coming of the Lord, don't you got to be always ready? Because no man know it the day nor the hour. But you still got to be ready. 
He said, if you're in the field, don't go running back to the house. I'm going to pick you up right there. Huh? He said, two can be in the bed. One will be taken and one left. Don't get up and go to the bathroom too soon now. Hold it tight. Go on to the refrigerator. Hold on, you might miss it. It's learning to seize the moments. The opportunities that God is affording all of us. Now watch this. So then as we have opportunities, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are the what? Now here's, here's my issue right there. You got to learn how to take care of one another. You got to learn how to encourage one another. That's what I like when the scripture says, and I've always been an advocate. If one rejoices, but if one mourning, I'm gonna mourn with you, huh? Because that's what. Guess what? If God won't break it down for you, you don't know when your time comes. Hmm? You don't know. So it makes a difference how we handle one another. It also it begs for you to understand that guess what? We go up together. Hmm? We rise together. Go to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. This also for the ESP. You ready? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He is the creator of the ends of the earth. And look at this. He does not faint, and he don't grow weary. He don't faint. God is not fainting on your circumstance. He ain't fainting on your situation. He ain't fainting. Are you catching this? It's no different than when he was in the boat and the disciples were disturbed. Jesus was asleep. And he woke up to tell them, did I not tell you we going so again, watch this here. Watch this. Have you not known? Yeah. Have you not heard? Where were you when I was speaking? Where were you when I was giving instruction? Oh, you was in class, but you weren't there. You know, sometimes you can be bothered in presence, but your mind is on the other side of town. You don't know that about that other brother. I'm gonna be one of them. Leave him alone. Listen here. You better have your mind where your body is. And be present to the situation. Because while you in deep thought way over yonder, the back truck that rolled over you. Huh? Watch this here. Watch this here. Have you not known it in the earth? The Lord is everlasting. The creator of the Israel. He don't faint. He don't go weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Now let me break that one down for you. His understanding is uncertain. That means God is the God that can do whatever he wants to do. So that's why a lot of times, don't speak on a situation that you don't know nothing about. I've heard it so many times. I can't believe, I can't believe, well, that's, that's, that's you. You can't believe. But you don't, see, unless you know God, leave that alone. Look what he goes on to say. He gives. So, now watch this here. You read the thing to fall out, but he just told you. Come on, come on. 
If you will tap into his presence, let me say it this way. You cannot tap into his presence and don't tap into his power. So here's another one of the real moments. We all have space and place to fail, right. yeah. to quit, right. yeah. to fall out, to give up. But what did he say? That's all I'm dealing with. What did he say? He gives what? Power to the faith and to him who has no might he says what? I will increase your strength. Now don't miss this. He didn't say you weren't going to have trials, you weren't going to have tribulations, you weren't going to go through stuff. He said, but come to me. Y'all you, you, walking with me anymore? I give power to the faith. So I already know you two seconds out of here. But I'm going to empower you. I know right now you done lifted all you can live. But I increase your strength. Let the weak say let the poor say because of what but he goes on saying, even you shall faint, be weary, and young men, my Bible said, shall be exhausted. See, a lot of times we go get them young ones called, we say, oh yeah, your back's strong, and you, you get them there. But the Bible said, there's a season where the young said, listen, I'm tired. Hmm? Are, we in the, are we in the book? He says, even you shall faint, be weary, and young men shall fall. But they that wait on the Lord, what's he going to do? They that, what is waiting? Expecting. God, I, 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 I got this going on, I got that on, but I'm waiting on you, Jesus. God, this is going on. This is happening. But God, I'm waiting on you, Jesus. Because your word has already promised me you will renew me. You will empower me. You will strengthen me. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. And look at this. They shall run and they shall walk. God says, can I change your condition? Will you trust me? Will you wait on me? Will you have expectation while you wait? Because while you wait, I'm maturing and I'm taking away lack. I'm taking away frustrations and disappointment. Let me deal with that. Woo. One more. Psalm 34. And I promise you, I'm done. Psalm 34. 34. Psalm 34. I'm going to read this one from the Amplified. So 34, we're looking at verses 9 and 10. Are you ready? 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. And that fear that is to revere and to worship him. Look at this, y'all. For there again, here we go, here we go. For there is no want to those who truly revere and worship him in godly fear. Ten years. The young lions lack food and they suffer hunger. But again, they who seek and inquire of and require the Lord. 
But right now, look at this. I love this, y'all. I'm through, I promise. All right, look at this. Look at this. Let me read this one more time. But they who seek, inquire of, and require the Lord by right of their need. Remember, I just got to talk about that. He said, if you require and inquire of the Lord, watch this, by right of your need. Y'all remember that? Okay, let me hear See, the need is what God's going to move from. But see, if you got it all together and, and, and don't state no need, God says, I've got no reason to move. But if you inquire of God, and it like this, and you're requiring God by the right of your need, because God, you said, you will supply all my need. You didn't specify it had to be this, this, or that. You said if it's a need. What he said, by right of their need, and watch this here, and on the authority of his word. Did you catch that? Now watch this here. For your need, you must find the word. Right. Right. Yes. Let's say it another way. For your need, you must find the promise. Right. And when you take your need and his And you put it together in prayer, in worship, in praise before him. The Bible says that none of them shall lack any beneficial thing. In essence, I'm going to meet your need. 